begin the honors convocation in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will follow the program as you have it before you, beginning with the singing of the opening hymn. Reverend Lawrence Goodmanstead, President Oscar Anderson, other members on the platform, alumni, faculty, and last but not least, students. Welcome to Homecoming Honors Convocation 1965. We would especially like to welcome three distinguished alumni who have in no small measure been acquainted with Augsburg College. Welcome Dr. Christopher Hagen, Reverend John Jensen, and Dr. Warren Kornbeck. And Dr. Warren Kornbeck isn't with us this morning. He's over at Rome with the Vatican Councils. A college reveals itself not only by the men it produces, but also by the men it honors, the men it remembers. Today we acknowledge three men, known for their wealth and deeds and accomplishments. They are men truly committed to the spirit of Augsburg. At homecoming, it seems proper that we remember with thankfulness the home that has given birth to such men. But it is in the lives of men that Augsburg lives on. As students, we should look beyond the graduating seniors receiving their degrees to those men and women who exemplify, exemplify in their lives the ideals for which we seek. Therefore, distinguished alumni, it is sincerely a privilege to make your acquaintance during this homecoming honors convocation, for we believe that you have enriched the Augsburg we attend. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose goodness we experience new each day, we give thanks for thy presence with us on this day. We are thankful for Augsburg College, for its heritage, for the church out of which it has been born and in which it has been fostered, for its alumni, for students and faculty and administration at this time. We are particularly mindful this morning of those who are being honored here. We are thankful for these men, and we pray that you will continue to be present in their lives and prosper their work. May all of us be strengthened in the courage and love and faith of Christ, and serve they in our lives in the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I would like to make some student introductions. Uh, first, I would like to begin introducing our homecoming queen candidates. And as I introduce them, would they pl please stand? First, Kathy Calpain. Her major is physical education, and she's from Parker's Prairie, Minnesota. Secondly, Vicki Mellum. Her major is art. And she's from Sleepy Eye, Minnesota. Kathy Pop, her major is home economics, and she reigns from Hutchinson, Minnesota. Bev Rosebold, Bev's major is English, and she's from Cottonwood, Minnesota. And finally, Sylvia Torstenson and her major is elementary education, and she's from Lake Park, Iowa. <laughs> Secondly,
family very much a part of homecoming is our football team. And now I'd like to introduce to you uh, Robert Warzeniak, who is the captain of our football team. He's a senior and a tackle. I guess he isn't here. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Would the football team stand too, and the coaches? <laughs> then I would like to introduce Janet Fisher, who is chairman of Homecoming. <laughs> Janet is a junior and she comes from Buffalo Lake. That concludes the introductions. It is most appropriate that at an honors convocation such as this, the one who should present these honors is the president of the college, Dr. Oscar Anderson. I don't think I need to introduce him, but I'm pleased to have the privilege to call upon him at this time to make these presentations, Dr. Anderson. Pastor Goodmisted, platform guests, colleagues, students, and royalty. I was sorry that I missed the visit by Norwegian royalty due to a brief hospitalization, but uh, I wouldn't want to miss the Augsburg royalty for anything. I want to welcome all of you, uh, as has already been done, to this convocation, and particularly the uh, alumni who are here. We shall have an opportunity to pay uh, even more special attention to you tomorrow at the alumni luncheon, but we want to welcome you uh, to this occasion which we think is a most fitting way in which to begin the homecoming festivities. Augsburg is a liberal arts college. It is dedicated intellectually to the proposition that persons are best prepared to live and serve when they have a breadth of knowledge and appreciation of the true, the good, and the beautiful, as well as depth in some area or discipline which represents a mastery that is more than surface in character. Today, Augsburg College, its Board of Regents, and its Alumni Association desire through the vehicle of the Distinguished Alumna Citation to honor three graduates whose careers since leaving this institution exemplify this combination of depth and breadth. At first, it may not be apparent that, the, that all of these men have gone in depth into the same field. Yet all of these three men were trained in theology, having graduated from a seminary, Augsburg Seminary in the case of two of them, and have served as parish pastors, as ministers of the Lutheran Church. To those whose image of Augsburg is that of a small preacher's school with a primary emphasis on religion and church vocation, the fact that all of these men have been pastors would tend to fortify the mistaken notion that depth of this kind precludes breadth in any truly liberal sense. However, the constellation of the three names, John M. Jensen, Christopher Hagen, and Warren Quanbeck, shines forth as brilliant proof that this college, even though historically emphasizing the place of theology and the role of the ministry, has indeed produced graduates of unusual breadth, of wide interests, of broad accomplishments, distributed liberally among and encompassing a host of human concerns. John M. Jensen, class of 1920, not 29. He's not quite that young. 
represents among Augsburg alumni a kind of international breadth. He is a Dane, so Danish in his cultural concerns that the King of Denmark bestowed on him the knighthood of Donnebro in 1955. Yet Canada claims a chapter of Dr. Jensen's life. Following his graduation from Augsburg and further study in New York and Philadelphia, Dr. Jensen moved to Canada. He holds his Bachelor of Divinity degree from the United Theological College of Montreal and served pastorates in New Brunswick and Montreal from 1922 to 1937. But the United States is his native land, for Dr. Jensen was born in Toledo, Ohio, and from 1937 to 1960, he served pastorates in Spencer, Iowa, and Viborg, South Dakota. It was while serving parish pastorates in the United Evangelical Lutheran Church that Dr. Jensen distinguished himself as a writer and editor and religious journalist. He served for nearly a quarter of a century as the editor of that synod's official organ, the Ansgar Lutheran. By the power of his pen, Dr. Jensen formed and informed the mind of his own church body, so that it was not strange that the UELC took a leading role in the efforts toward church unity and in bringing about the formation of the American Lutheran Church in 1960. Through the Ansgar Lutheran under Dr. Jensen's editorship, the warmth of Danish Lutheran Christianity was preserved at the same time injecting enough of the caustic and Kierkegaardian critique of church and of times into his pages so as to be frequently referred to by the descriptive title, The Angry Lutheran. It was said by his synodical president when the Ansgar Lutheran merged with the Lutheran Standard in the merger of 1960 that no man had had a greater influence on his church body than John M. Jensen. To preserve the history of the UELC, Dr. Jensen was designated the historian to write the account of how Danish Lutheranism lived and flowed in the American scene into the fuller river of a united church with Norwegian and German as well as Danish ethnic backgrounds. The United Evangelical Lutheran Church, an interpretation from Dr. Jensen's pen, stands as that synod's definitive history. To provide additions to our theological literature out of the Danish language, Dr. Jensen has translated and had published works of Kai Munk, Walter Luther, uh, Walter Luthi, Regin Printer, Kai Jensen, and Peter Olson. In 1954, the Wartburg Seminary of Dubuque conferred on Pastor Jensen the degree Doctor of Divinity. From 1960 to 1963, he served as an associate editor and staff writer for Augsburg Publishing House. Last year, he returned to his first love, the parish, becoming pastor of the Lutheran Church of Christ the King in Iowa City, Iowa, where he lives with his bride of 43 years ago, Ragnil. Two sons and a married daughter comprise the Jensen family. It should be noted that this week's issue of the Lutheran Standard carries a, a guest editorial by our distinguished guests. Today, Augsburg salutes its graduate, theologian, pastor, editor, historian, author, and translator, John M. Jensen, and presents this distinguished alumnus citation, presented to John M. Jensen in our nomination by the Board of Regents and the Alumni Association of Augsburg College, Minneapolis, Minnesota, in grateful recognition of dedicated service and outstanding leadership which have notably exemplified the ideals of Augsburg as an institution of Christian higher education, Friday, October 22, 1965. <laughs> Christopher Hagen, Augsburg Academy, class of 1925, Augsburg College, class of 1929, Augsburg Seminary, class of 1934, represents among Augsburg alumni a unique professional breadth. A man may be many things and still remain in one vocation. 
seldom are men able to prepare themselves and serve in a distinguished way in a number of exacting professions. Yet Christopher Hagen is just such a rare person whose breadth of training and experience speaks well for the kind of solid but broad foundation a liberal arts education can supply. Many will recall him as a student, active in music as a singer and instrumentalist, participating in debate and serving as president of the Augsburg Student Society. There are those of him who think of uh, there are those who think of him as teacher and professor. He taught science and German to the high school students of Pine Island, Minnesota. He taught psychology at Augsburg College. And your spokesman this morning was a sophomore who never forgot that class in psychology and its youthful instructor. Not a few will recall Dr. Hagen as a pastor. Two Lutheran churches on the north edge of Minneapolis today, large and flourishing, look upon him as the shepherd who served in early and difficult days. First Lutheran Church of Columbia Heights and Spring Lake Park Lutheran Church of Spring Lake Park consider Christopher Hagen among their spiritual fathers. Around the world in the Santal of India today, Many rise to doc call Dr. Hagen blessed for his work as a medical missionary. Upon completion of his medical training at the University of Minnesota and a two-year hitch as captain in the U.S. Army Medical Corps serving the Euro European theater, Dr. Hagen went to India in 1946 to become the superintendent of the Mohal Pahori Christian Hospital in Bihar. A six-year stint from 1946 to 1952 was followed by another of two years from 1960 to 1962. Though no longer engaged as a medical missionary, Dr. Hagen continues his interest in this area by serving as the medical advisor to the Board of World Missions of the Lutheran Church in America and as vice president of the Santal Mission Board. Today in this community, a great host of people know and revere Dr. Hagen as their trusted family physician and surgeon. Out of his offices at Southdale, he carries on his busy medical practice, serving on the medical staffs of Fairview Deaconess and Fairview Southdale Hospitals, keeps up his contacts and memberships in a wide band of medical organizations, participates in church affairs, and serves on numer in numerous civic groups. As if to be all this were not demanding enough, Dr. Hagen has found time to author the book Faith and Health and the book Bells Still Are Calling, the latter an account of the church's mission in India. Mrs. Hagen graduated from Augsburg, Bertha E. Johansson, in 1928. Three girls, Muriel, Catherine, and Janet, comprise the Hagen offspring. A college produces graduates for many professions. Today, Augsburg honors the many professions of one graduate, Dr. Christopher Hagen, a theologian, pastor, teacher, missionary, physician, and author, and herewith proudly presents this citation to you, Dr. Christopher Hagen. A nomination by the Board of Regents of the Alumni Association of Augsburg College in grateful recognition of dedicated service and outstanding leadership, which have not notably exemplified the ideals of Augsburg as an institution of Christian higher education in America. <laughs> Warren A. Kornbeck, class of 1937, bears a name to be conjured with in the circles of Augsburg College, even if you can't keep the whole relationship exactly straight. <laughs> to give you a little help in establishing some of the family connections, let it be simply stated, Warren is Martin Kornbeck's cousin and Philip Kornbeck's second cousin. That should simplify the matter somewhat. Among Augsburg alumni, Warren Kornbeck today represents an ecumenical breadth, which makes his alma mater proud to do him honor 
even though his participation in that dramatic evidence of a new era in the church's history, the Second Vatican Council, prevents his presence here today. Dr. Kwanbeck's formal education revolved around Augsburg College, the University of Minnesota, Luther Theological Seminary, Augsburg Theological Seminary, and Princeton Theological Seminary, from which he received his Doctor of Theology degree. Parish experience was gained in New York City, Brooklyn, and Duluth, Minnesota. After serving temporarily as an instructor of Greek and New Testament at Luther Seminary, Dr. Kwanbeck was called by the then Evangelical Lutheran Church to the professorship of systematic theology at Luther in 1948, a post he has held ever since. It is as a theologian in the classroom that Warren Kwanbeck has made his first great mark. Few are his peer as a lecturer. His lucid language easily and steadily articulates the most intricate problem. As a thorough scholar of the Bible, he has made clear to succeeding classes of his students the central meaning and significance of Holy Scripture. Seminaries over the world have engaged him as a lecturer, and commissions and boards, synodical and intersynodical, have sought his participation. Presently, he serves as chairman of the Board of Publications of the American Lutheran Church. Recognized as one of the leading theologians of the Lutheran Church in the world, Dr. Kornbeck has been engaged in almost every facet of the ecumenical movement. His contributions to the dialogue between Lutherans of the world, between Lutheran and Reformed communions, and between Protestants and Catholics are well known. When the winds of change began to blow throughout Roman Catholicism, as a result of Pope John XXIII's emphasis on aggiornamento, updating the church, and the Vatican Council began meeting in Rome, one of the delegate observers chosen to represent the Lutheran World Federation was Warren Kornbeck. In this role, particularly, in this role particularly, both while in Rome and while in this country, interpreting the meaning of the changes taking place in what many thought was an immutable monolith, Dr. Kornbeck has distinguished himself, so much so that he is considered by many as the most knowledgeable American theologian engaged in ecumenical activity today. His many articles and publications round out his contribution. Dr. and Mrs. Kornbeck, Mrs. Kornbeck, the former Dagmar Dahl, whom many of us remember from our student days at Augsburg, are presently in Rome. And even though they are absent, Augsburg is happy and proud today at this alumni honor convocation to recognize Warren A. Kornbeck, theologian, pastor, professor, writer, ecumenical leader, and astute interpreter of our time. The citation will be presented to Dr. Kornbeck at some convenient and appropriate occasion upon his return from Rome. And now it is my privilege to present to you the two distinguished gentlemen whom we have honored this morning, and I'm going to call first upon Dr. John M. Jensen for his brief response. Dr. Jensen. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Dr. Anderson and ladies and gentlemen on the platform and friends of Augsburg. When I got the letter this summer from your president, Dr. Anderson, that I was elected to receive this distinguished citation, I had once thought that this was entirely undeserved. As I was thinking about it, I got to, it came to me that I should rather give Augsburg a citation because it has done so much for me. I was a young man who came from the farms of Western North Dakota and when I came here to Minneapolis, it was overwhelming. This was a big city. 
And I wasn't used to big cities, and it had so many wonderful things. And this college was that building, the only building that's left now was such a tremendous thing for me. I was a Christian when I came to Oxford, but a very legalistic concept of my faith. But here I, at Augsburg, I found a Christian freedom that released me, set me free. I found that Christian freedom and faith could go hand in hand. And so thus my Christian faith became a joyous experience. And this had great influence on me and my studies. Uh, and I wasn't only interested in obtaining knowledge, but in truth did something for me that I even can't explain. I was fortunate to get some very splendid professors. I'm sure that uh, some of you remember Evgen, and I know my good friend Mortensen, who is also here today, will remember Evgen and Svegen. We fought many a battle, and <laughs> Henriksen and uh, Sverdrup and others. They made me search for the truth and the meaning of things. So it was a great moment in 1920, when at the graduation, we were only five and we were just men that time. We didn't have queens at that time. <laughs> we were only five graduates. And we walked up on the platform after a long speech that I don't remember. <laughs> But it was a tremendous moment for me when we came up there, and this was a very personal thing. You see, only five, and Dr. Sverdrup, junior, I suppose we would call him, he handed us this, took our hand, and said to me, I confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts, reminding you of the fact that truth, truth is the highest aim of life. I never forget it. Truth is the highest aim of life. I have attended a number of other institutions since that evening. I met many other good men. But it was here at Augsburg, and I can say this without, without uh, trying to flatter anyone, but it was here at Augsburg that I got my start. And this is the fact that I was set free here. And this is the greatest thing that can happen to anyone. And for this, I am grateful to both God and Oxford. So I thank you. And it's my hope that all the young people that come here to Oxford may have this same happy and uplifting and searching experience that I had. Thank you very much. came here this morning and discovered that uh, Dr. Kwanbeck would be in Rome, I was tempted to quote Shakespeare's uh, statement, how much the fool that hath been sent to Rome exceeds the fool that hath been kept at home. <laughs> Only I think we should paraphrase it, how much the fool that hath been kept at home exceeds the fool that hath been sent to Rome. I think my chief reason for being here this morning is because of uh, the years that we were privileged to spend in foreign places uh, in the work of the Santal Mission. And this leads me to quote a passage from the Panchatantra, translated from the Sanskrit, a little book, a paperback I picked up in India from a fellow missionary in which it says, the truly self-respecting man discovers what he is and can, deserves and dares and understands by traveling in foreign lands. We who have had the privilege of working on the far-flung frontiers of the Church of Christ uh, recognize that here lies a place in which uh, we have much yet to do. And my chief little greeting this morning to the distinguished guests uh, to the uh, people on the platform and to you who are gathered here, is that uh, we in Christian America today 
should begin to take the world and its problems seriously. We've only scratched the surface in what we used to call foreign missions and now called world, call world missions. Here indeed lies a field of service in which you who are young uh, could uh, write a chapter and many chapters which could spell much for the betterment of mankind. In almost any field of service you choose, whether you like to be an engineer or a teacher or a doctor or a nurse or what have you, there are posts abroad crying for intelligent, dedicated personnel, both in the church and outside the church. And let us never forget that we who are of the church are really never outside the church. Though we may serve in posts that are not directly related to the church, we are the church. And when we go abroad, we must remember this, that whether we serve in Peace Corps or some secular agency, some government post, or under the uh, mission board of some church, no matter what we serve under, we still are Christian people. This obviously is one of the messages that Augsburg has always stood for and which we learned when we were here as students. And so I feel that uh, my message to you this morning should be simply this. Let us take the world seriously and let us give serious thought to the fact that in the coming generation, that is in the rest of the 20th century, the Christian church in America with its considered affluence and its tremendous potential in terms of brain power, never before in the history of the world have there been as many educated young people as there are in America today. Never before have we had as many people seeking college education. What are we going to do with these educated brains? What are we going to do with this affluence? Are we going to spend it only on ourselves and on the refinement of the petty little things of our material existence? Or are we going to take the world seriously and begin to look out beyond our frontiers and see what is there for me to do in some far-flung post in Africa or Asia? It has been conservatively estimated that in this century, all of the animists of the world, for example, will embrace some organized religion. What religion is this going to be? If you are there to help them, it could be the Christian religion. If not, it might well be the Muslim religion or the Buddhist religion or some other religion that has not nearly as much to offer for their improvement and betterment. And so I beg of you, young people, to give serious consideration to this field of service in which we have had some, uh, the privilege of playing some small part. Those of you who have heard me quote this before will, I'm sure, forgive me for bringing it up again. In Santal Parganas, the Santals like to tell you to get up early in the morning to start your work. And they say, get up with the first crow of the rooster. Pohil Simra, they say. The first crow of the rooster is a real early time of the dawn and in the tropics. This is a very interesting and uh, lovely time of the day. The sun hasn't yet risen, but as daylight advances ahead of the sun, there is a little breeze that pushes across the horizon ahead of the sun. And this breeze is very welcome on the brow that may have been perspiring most of the night. And this fresh morning breeze feels very good. The poet says, far off I hear the crowing of the cocks, and through the door the time unlocks, I feel the fresh breathing of tomorrow creep. This often comes to me as an expression of those lands on the other side of the world that are calling for help and needing the kind of help that you educated and now being educated young people could and should give. It reminds us of the fact that many of these nations are only at the beginning of their development. They are crying for help. They are where America was 100 or 150 years ago. Rather than sit down and enjoy the comforts and luxuries of America, wouldn't it be far more interesting and far more challenging to face that task which lies abroad and listen to the crowing of the cocks and the door that time unlocks and feel the fresh breathing of tomorrow creep. I beg of you, young people, wouldn't you like to be a part of that tomorrow?